In this video, we're going to explain how the dynamic blocks template works. As you can see, here I have the full pack file opened with the three templates. And here we have the dynamic blocks template. Okay, so let me zoom in. Before we start, I'll emphasize some important concepts to get the maximum advantage from the template. First of all, by selecting the background, this arrow will appear in the corner. And if we click on it, the instructions will be displayed. And it's important to read them. As you can see, there are five items. The first one refers to two commands we have to activate with these variables. Make sure you set wipeout frame to zero and transparency display to on. This is very important since most of the blocks use wipeouts and transparent hatches. So by activating this command, the hatches from the blocks will be displayed and be plotted properly. Otherwise, there will be visualization and plot errors. Just make sure to reactivate these commands every time you open a file, because they might have been reset. According to the second point of the instructions, we also have to open the page setup dialog by Control P and activate plot transparency. It refers to this box, which we should activate in case we have to plot the drawing. It will show the transparency of the hatches instead of opaque solids. The third item says which fonts to install. We can find them in the attached PDF. The fourth one says that if you bought older versions of the templates before, we have to replace them with this one. In case you did buy previous versions of the template before, you won't have to buy them again. You must have received an email with a download link or an access code. If you have not received this email, please send us an email at info at archiflash.com with your order number and the email address you used to purchase the older template. Finally, the last item explains how to watch these videos by pressing the control key and clicking on the text. Now let's start with the blocks. Joinery is the first category. In this first group, we find doors with different views and types. The first thing I'd like to mention is how dynamic blocks work. By selecting them, some arrows and symbols will appear, which will allow us to edit different parameters. These parameters can also be edited on the Properties palette. So if you go to the Custom section within the palette, we'll have all the editable parameters listed. So, for instance, let's select this door. If we click on this arrow, we'll be able to edit the length of the block. Same thing for the opposite arrow in the other direction. We can also modify the opening angle. We can adjust the width of the hosting wall, the width of the frame, the leaf thickness. We can even mirror the block in one direction or another. And if we right click and select Reset, we'll go to the starting point. As I mentioned, we can modify the same parameters for the property palette. Therefore, we recommend you to use both symbols and palette at the same time to have more control, being able to use the best alternative in each case. We also have this double door with very similar parameters to the simple one. We can modify its size, the length of the leaves, scale it in the other direction. Modify the width of the leaves, the thickness of the wall, the opening angle, and we can also modify the visibility states. Also in the palette, we could change the visibility state, choosing among handle, without handle, or even hiding the hosting wall. For the sliding doors, we can adjust the size, door location, width of the hosting wall, and their visibility states, like the other ones. using this arrow or from this tab on the Properties palette. As you can see, the double sliding door works pretty much in the same way. 
In the front view, we could select either folding or sliding doors, even if we'd like to have simple or double doors. If we want dimensions or not. If so, we can choose their scale from large to small. We can adjust length and height to our drawing. Let's say 0 0.92 by 2.05. And we see how the door adapts to the parameters modified right away, by hand or typing. In the section view, we can adjust the width, the height, the thickness of the door, and hide the hosting wall. The next group is an external door with less features than the others. We can modify the length and the width. In the front view, we can choose the kind of door, either folding, sliding, and other varieties of external doors. And we can change the length, the height, and choose if we want dimensions and their scale. In the next block, the window, we can select the amount of leaves from 1 to 6. Select the system between folding or sliding, and the type of visualization, with ledge or without ledge, and transparent, in order to hide the background. We can adjust the general length and the length of each leaf. In the front view, we can also select the amount of leaves from 1 to 6. I'll go for 5. We can select the system between folding or sliding. We can choose it with dimensions and their scale, or without dimensions. And again, we can change the length and the height from Properties Palette or directly with the arrows. You'll see that in the Folding option, we have more parameters inside the windows to modify. Then we have a section also adjustable in height and width. We can select one leaf, two, or three. For the window shutter, we can select small or large dimensions, or without dimension. We can hide the box. And again, just like in the other blocks, we can change measures from the palettes or the arrows. We will also have window slabs with similar features to the previous blocks. In addition, we can set the size of the slabs, maybe small, medium, or large, and in this tab, we can select the type of frame. We can increase the height, and the slabs will automatically extend. In the section block, we can adjust the height, the slab size, and they will be immediately updated. And we can even modify their angle. You can see how a visualization error occurred, just because this parameter depends on this one. Therefore, we need to update the height in order to solve it. This may happen in some blocks, so just be aware of this AutoCAD glitch. Sometimes the software can create a dependency between parameters. In case this happens, the best solution will be to update the other parameters until we find the right one. We can also modify the distance between slabs if we'd like a small, medium, or large distance. And select the element shape, curved, rectangular, or Z form. Now let's move on to the closet. We can select the amount of doors from 1 to 6. Just like we did on the window, we can choose between folding and sliding doors. And we can display or hide the superior part. 
Again, like in the other blocks, its dimensions can be small, large, or just hide them. The measures of the doors will be automatically modified when we change the dimensions of the closet. And if we choose folding doors, we can customize the door even more, since their measures can be adjusted. Notice that if we modify length of the closet, the doors update at the same time. So the best way to work with it would be to establish the main measures of the closet first. And then, we can define the position of the doors, just in case we don't want them to be equal. Then we have the floor plan closet, which we can modify the length and width in both directions. We can choose the amount of doors from 1 to 6. Also select a level of definition, from detailed to simplified and the separation of the hangers to adapt it to the scale of the drawing. Finally, we have the section of the wardrobe. And again, we can show or hide the superior part. We can modify the inferior part. Remember that all these can be modified on the palette. For example, we could choose three drawers, four drawers, two drawers, two shelves, one shelf, or nothing. We can also modify the central part, if we want it with one hanger or two adjustable shelves. Once again, we can display dimensions either small or large, and without dimensions. All these blocks are very useful not only for general drawings, but for specific joinery plans as well, including doors, windows, wardrobes, window shutters, slabs, and so on. In the last group, you have the kitchen with three blocks that will allow you to design your own floor plan and elevation. The first one is the floor plan block, then the elevation block, and the superior block. In the floor plan block, we could go to the property palette and choose if we want normal with one door, normal with two doors or empty, in case we want to set the fridge. If we want it to be on the corner with one or two doors. So let's set normal with one door. I can switch the sense and adjust the measures just like the other blocks. and we can set it in the section or projection visualization. Again, I could select the type of dimensions, no dimensions, with dimensions, and both dimensions. This is very useful because we can modify all the dimension settings at the same time in the property palette, since it's a common parameter. So notice how we can select with no dimensions, with dimensions, or with section view. To display the width dimension, we have to select the corner block and choose Dimensions A by B. This way, we can visualize the dimensions in both directions. Now, moving on to the elevation block, we could also change the measures. Any of them, the width, the heights, even the worktop or the skirting board. Also, through the property palette or the arrows we could change the kind of module. If we want it with one door, the opposite, two doors, folding horizontal, if we want it empty, or with drawers from two to five. As we've just seen in the previous one, we can set it at A by B dimensions, only have the width dimension, or without dimensions. So notice how with a single block, we can create an entire kitchen. And the last block defines the superior furniture of the kitchen. Just like the others, we can set the type of visualization and without or with dimensions, also dimension A by B. So for these first blocks of the kitchen, we can select dimensions A by B to have the height dimensions, as this dimension is adjustable. 
Now let's move on to the construction blocks. We'll start with the columns. We are able to adjust width and height, and in this arrow, select if we want it with or without hatch. Also through the palette properties. The next group would be the steel sections. We have a list of the most used profiles in different regions, from Europe to the UK, United States, and Australia. We can choose a section and select the size we may need. For example, we can also select the size from the Properties palette, and the section updates right away. To see the name of the section, we have to select it. Go to the palette, and it will be in the Name tab. The next blocks are timber sections that can be edited from triangular to rectangular. We can choose the size. Just the same, whether we want it triangular, we can also edit it. We can select it if we want it with color hatch, gray hatch, or without hatch. Here we have a piece of wood with the same editable parameters. The next block is a concrete beam with editable measures. And we can select the amount of superior steel bars from 2 to 6. 2, 3, 4, and 6. We can also select the inferior bars, 2, 3, 4, and 6. We can edit the width and height from the properties palette, and also edit the visualization of the stirrups to normal or simplified. We can select the kind of hatch, with hatch or without it, or even without background. And in the last option, we'll only see the stirrup. This last option would be useful in case we want to add another stirrup to a beam, as you can see. In the next group, we find the anchors. Here we have the head, whose size can be edited and even select the type we need in our details. In the body block, we can choose the kind of body and head among smooth, curved, or hexagonal. As always, we can edit it with the arrows or going to the palette from the diameter and length tabs. Here we have a screw plug with different types, nut, Y-shape, plug, mechanic, or chemical. These arrays of screw heads allow us to draw beam unions. We can edit the amount of rows and columns. So we can also do it from the Properties palette, going to Columns and Rows to adjust it. Finally, these are the screw stone anchors, which can be edited, and brick anchor systems. Now we are going to see the joists. We have semi-resistant joists, and self-supporting joists. We can edit their height and width. Also choose with or without hatch. The elevation joists work in exactly the same way. In the other joist, we can modify the head, the height, even the amount of bottom bars, from 0 to 5, and the amount of top bars, from 0 to 4. We can also modify the head to turn it into a simple T-section joist. The elevation works just like the other one. We can edit both dimensions, choose width, or without hatch, and also the type, either double T or simple T. In the next group, we have the small vaults. We find four types, ceramic, concrete vault with three holes, with five vaults, and polystyrene, 
We can choose with or without hatch. We can edit their height, their width, and also adjust the overlap element for the joists. So as you can see, it automatically updates the changes. The elevation block has editable width and height parameters as well. Edit if we want with or without hatch. And choose between simplified and detailed view. Here we have other types of small vaults. One with an arch form, and the other one is a block slab that can be cavity type, curved, or rectangular. They look white because they don't contain wipeouts like the other blocks. They have a common hatch. The elevation vault is exactly the same one, so you can edit it in the same way. Then we have a truss wire. And we can edit the width, the length, and choose with or without hatch. Notice that we need to update the hatch by resetting the length since AutoCAD made it depend on the hatch. Here we have a lintel. We can modify the geometry and choose if we want the type between U-shape or rectangular, and also the color can be without hatch, with crossing hatch, or color hatch. Now we have the elevation and section of a slab mesh. In the elevation, we can select the diameter size from small to extra large. We can choose the kind of end, curved or straight. We can select with or without hatch. Of course, we can adjust the dimensions and the mesh updates right away. Okay, I'll set the end curved. And we can also adjust the size of the mesh from small to big separation between bars. The elevation of the mesh has two types of views. The first one would work in case we want to add it to a structural plan and maybe place it over a hosting slab. It will hide the drawing under it. The second option is very useful when we use it as a note. We can select the distance from bigger to smaller. And we can type the text of the annotation. For example, to indicate the diameter of the bars from our slab. The next block is a detailed view of assembly steel bars. You can edit both distance between bars, vertical and horizontal separations. Also from the Properties palette, we can type the text we need in the annotations. For example, for the diameter of the bars, let's go for a 10 mm bar. Once we insert the text, it will update immediately. We can also edit the size of the bars in these tags right here. We said 10 millimeters, so we would just change it to match. Same thing with the vertical bars. We could select 0 0.025 meters, hit enter, and it just updates. And we can also edit from the palette the distances between vertical and horizontal bars. And finally, we can have the bars with hatch or without it. The next block is a steel sheet, and we can edit its width and height. All right, here appears a hatch glitch. So let's reset the height. We can select the type among a composite deck, a curved sheet, and Z section. The floor plan block has the exact same editable parameters. Now, this is the steel bars section view. We can modify their length, edit the separation distance between bars, and even select with or without hatch. In the elevation view of the steel bars, we can choose the type, either corrugated bars or smooth the amount of end bars if we want with one or two.
we can select with or without hatch. Also, from this arrow, we can set the diameter of the bar and from this palette tab as well. In this group, we also have stirrups. We can determine their dimensions. We can also set their diameter. The dimensions of the front view block of the stirrup can be edited as well. We can also select with or without hatch. The next group corresponds to the bricks. I can select the hatch type among color hatch, black and white, or without hatch. Also choose the type of joint, either concave, flush, or without joint. We can change the type of brick between hold and solid brick. Also, with these arrows, we can set its dimensions to adapt them to our drawings, such as big scale plan and detail sections. We have different varieties of bricks with the same editable parameters. We can modify their dimensions. For these hollow bricks, in section and floor plan view, we can set them with three holes two, or one. This parameter can be edited with this arrow. And we can modify the height with this one. The floor plan view can be edited just like the section, in one direction or another. Notice that the other type of bricks have all the exact common parameters. They just have different shapes. Moving to the drywall block, I can edit the amount of boards in each side of the wall. I can choose among double, simple, or nothing. I'll leave it like the original. And we can modify the thickness of the boards, the height, the kind of hatches, and the inner insulation width. Here we have an insulation with dimensions and hatches editable. Same thing for this other kind of insulation. The windowsill can be adapted to the wall. We can choose among stone or steel kinds, and the end with or without dripped. The base plate has editable dimensions A by B. I can choose to show the central hole or hide it, and also modify the location of the bars. The parameters are the width, the bars, the thickness of the base, and hatches. The sandwich panel has editable dimensions as well. We can choose the material of the inferior layer. It can be plaster, wooden layers, or a combination of both. You can also edit the width of the layers. There are different types of superior layers, simple, double, complex, and damp roof. As many blocks we select, two types, hatches or without hatch. Finally, we have the roof tiles. We can edit their length, set an angle. We can select their size, smaller or bigger, and the hatch, color hatch, black and white, or without hatch. There are three types of tiles, curved, screwed flat, and dovetailed flat tiles. In the building categories, we find stairs. We have a floor plan and a section. It works by defining the geometry first and then selecting the amount of steps that will fit the length. We can also set double railings, simple, or none. And in case we have railings, 
we can determine their width. We can edit the extension of the railings. The section parameters, like dimensions, are also editable. We can select number of steps too. Besides, we can select the type, either floating or normal, and the view. We can keep the section view or go for elevation or projection. So as you can see, it's completely adaptable. This is an arrow sign for stairs. We have I, L, and U-shaped for each type of stair. The swimming pool can be L-shaped or rectangular. We can add dimensions, small or large. We can select with or without hatch. And we can choose the kind of view. It can be normal, without edge, in wall section mode, or wall section with formwork. If we select the hatch option now, it will update, just like setting the rectangular shape. The pool section heights can be modified independently. And we can choose the type of definition from detailed to simplified. And again, select it with smaller or larger dimensions or without them, with hatch or without it. We could even modify the parameters of the slab and wall. This is a single block. Its main parameter, named Tool, includes a whole collection of tools to choose from. And we can select the type of hatch. This block is very useful when it comes to drawing plans, or explaining construction processes, or even to specify any work tool that could be important to provide. The ladder has basic geometry parameters. We can adjust them in the elevation, in 45 degree view, in the lateral and floor plan view. The type parameter includes screwed, fixed, or with support. All the ladders excepting the mobile ladder have the type parameter. Now we have the shoring. The length and width are editable. We can have a frontal or lateral view and select it with color or gray hatch or without hatch. Then, this scaffolding can have fixed support, mobile, or without any. The type of scaffolding can be normal, triangular, X-shaped, with ladder, and with half ladder. If we select the ladder, we can choose the amount of bars from 2 to 9. The scaffolding structure contains an array of equal elements, so we can manually define the rows and columns. Besides, we can select three types. Triangular, square, and X-shaped. The mobile and fixed barbecue are very simple blocks, which can be slightly edited. In the furniture category, we find chair blocks. We have three types in the parameter tab. And we can change the size and orientation angle. The elevations and section will work the same way. In the group of tables, the circular table can have chairs or not. And we can choose the diameter. The rectangular table can have chairs or not as well. And we can adjust its dimensions. We can select the type of table, either with or without extension, and also curved rectangular or studio type. The elevation table has length and height parameters and amount of legs from 1 to 6. To define our TV, we have size and type parameters. Moving on to the bed, we see how we can choose double or simple type if we want simplified or detailed view, depending on the scale of our plan. And we can adjust its dimensions for sure. 
The couch or sofa can be L or I-shaped. We can adjust its length and width dimensions. And we can select the amount of seats from 1 to 5. We can convert it into a lounge chair or a common one. If we choose the L type, we can select the amount of seats for the extension. They will equally adjust to our drawing. The elevation also has the L option, and we can select the amount of seats. which adapt every time we adjust the dimensions. We could display the cushions or hide them. Then we have other blocks, such as armchairs and a curved sofa. The next group is a chair bench array, which can be deployed by selecting any corner. The elevation has the same feature without rows. For the bookcase, we can define the rows from 2 to 6, and the columns from 1 to 4. We can choose with or without objects, and we can modify the dimensions of the blocks as well. Same thing with the section view. We can choose with or without objects. In the deck chair block, we can simply modify its scale. We have an umbrella with height, radius, and type parameters, just like the floor plan view. Moving to the sanitary category, we have a sink with either simple or double basin. We can select rectangular or circular form, also with or without colander. If I choose the colander option, I could extend it and I can always modify the dimensions. Here we have the washing machine with basic measure parameters in both views. An oven, a ceramic stove with different amount of zones, and modify the geometry. The fridge can be double or simple. The doors can be horizontal or vertical and the dimensions are adjustable. Then we have a chest, an extractor, and we can choose between a normal or corner version. Also choose a normal or a smooth one. We can modify each part independently. We also have a towel rack and a shower. We can change the measures and select the shower or bath option and if we prefer it rectangular or circular. We can adjust the elevation in one direction and the other. The toilet includes three types, two adapted versions, a compact built-in, and a traditional. And it can be open or closed. We also have a frontal and lateral view with three versions. There are two kinds of wash basin blocks one with cabinet, and a simple sink. The first one can have simple or double basin. We can adjust the dimensions of the cabinet and the sink, and we can set it rectangular or curved shape. If we select the elevation and click on these arrows, we can select in each unit the type of elements we'd like. We can set doors, drawers, or nothing. We can choose between having a superior drawer or not. Of course, all the dimensions are editable. Here we have the side view, and here the sink without cabinet. They can be adapted, traditional, half moon shaped, and rectangular. There are faucets for shower and sink. The shower faucet can be with or without column and choose its scale. There are also lateral and floor plan views. Now, 
The sink faucets also have a variety of types to select. Then we have hospital blocks. Now, in the category special furniture, we have simpler blocks than the previous ones. We have design table, gym, pianos, recreational like ping pong and billiard. Finally, we have the exterior blocks including cars with different models, motorcycles, street indications, lamppost, lamps, ramps with different forms. There are U, I, L, or double I shaped. Also, we can model its dimensions. The block of fences includes balustrade, wooden, metal, glass, and steel mesh types. Finally, we have benches that can be edited. And trash cans with measure parameters and different types. So these would be all the blocks from the dynamic template. Just remember, you have the most frequent questions videos in case of doubt.